Danny is going to search the criminal records to see if he can find any trace of Mary Ann Buttervant after she came out of the workhouse. All right, Liv. Hello, Danny. How are you, How are you mate? You all right? Cup of tea? Yeah, cup of tea. You quite take hungry, yeah? No you all right, babe? I ain't got a clue what's going to come up. Hopefully nothing. And there's no crime involved. OK. Search all records. So, so I found her name. It says she was a servant. So, that, so she did have a job. It says Mary Ann Buttervan bowed at police court. A crime, having been delivered of a child, did by secret disposition of the dead body. Endeavour to conceal the birth thereof. So she pleaded guilty. Did not expect that. I thought it'd be petty stealing when you've held your own newborn in your arm and it's such a vulnerable little weak little thing. You know, it always makes me feel slightly sick. To the idea of a baby dying before it even gets started on this earth. But the idea of it being a baby, of all things, not babies. No. Oh. I, I, f I feel that, you know, I'm starting this journey and I want to grow to love these people. I want to grow to love these people, you know, because these are my blood. You know, I don't want to... I, I don't want to find out stuff like this. I've come into this thinking, you know, like, um, I'll, you know, I'll be quite detached from it and that, um, you know, it's just bits of paper I'm reading and stuff like that, but it actually goes a bit deeper than that. Danny has come to the Bishopsgate Institute for further help unravelling Mary Ann Buttervant's criminal record. He's here to meet historian Dr. Daniel Gray. Please call me Daniel. Oh, good man. Right. My two times great grandmother, Mary Ann, she's got a criminal record, which I didn't know about, and she pleaded guilty of endeavouring to conceal the birth of a child. So I, I, I'm like, now she was 17 at this point. Yeah. So, I don't know whether she was helping some, deliver someone else's baby, but it was her own child. Um, I, I don't know if you can explain to me what it means. Well, I've found some documents which I'm hoping is going to help you with that. So, this is the copy of an indictment. Mary Ann Buttervant delivered of a certain female child on the 24th day of February. I can't, I can't read no it, it's driving me mad. In the County of London and within the jurisdiction of the said court by a certain de secret disposition of the dead body of the said child, to wit, by secretly placing the dead body of the said child in a pail, so that's a bucket, and covering its dead body with ashes there with intent to conceal the birth thereof. So what it's saying she's done is she's hidden the dead body of a baby and that it's her baby, that she's the one who's given birth to it. I thought that might have been the case. So this is the death certificate. Daughter of Marianne Buttervant, unmarried. So what's really crucial here about cause of death is that it says, found dead, hemorrhage from umbilical cord, from want of proper attention at birth. There's no evidence of violence. No one's tried to hurt the baby in any way. What's happened is that shortly after giving birth, when the umbilical cord's been cut, no one's tied it. 
and that means that you can bleed to death very, very quickly. This is, this is how I'm going to put it in my head, considering this is my family. You know, that she was 17. Maybe she didn't know she was pregnant. All of a sudden, this baby starts to come out. She then tries to deal with it herself. She doesn't know what to do. She gets it wrong. So, oh, I can't imagine what that was like. And then, of course, she panics and puts the baby in a bucket, just... If there had been a midwife there, which um, most working-class women can arrange to hire one, or at the very least, at the very least, a, a local woman who's friendly and helps people out informally because she's given birth herself... Just someone. Someone they would have known to tie the cord and been able to do it quickly enough. Age two minutes. Yeah. Concealment of birth was a common offence in the Victorian period, and women could be prosecuted for hiding the dead body of a baby. It was the jury's job to decide whether or not the child had been intentionally killed. What she could have got and what they give women who they suspect of having deliberately killed their children, two years imprisonment with hard labour. But this is basically a suspended sentence, no jail time. They seem to have decided this was very much a tragic accident. And this might sound like a weird thing, but I'm slightly relieved. I think relief is totally understandable. Yeah. Before she died in 1960, Mary Ann went on to have 10 other children. Her youngest, Sylvie, is now in her 90s and lives nearby in Poplar in East London. I haven't seen her since I was a uh, baby, tiny, tiny, so it's been a long, long time. But I'm, I'm, um, I'm really happy that there's somebody that's, um, you know, still alive, that I can talk to, that um, gives me this access into this Victorian world. I'm also very nervous because I don't know what sort of reaction I'm going to get. Sylvie is cared for by her daughter, Iris, Danny's distant cousin. You right? Yeah, you're both all right. You look lovely. You look beautiful now. Come see Auntie Sylvie. I will do, come. Hello, my darling. What yeah. have you put me in? I know, I do apologise. <laughs> kiss. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah, but I don't want to be a celebrity. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, nor do I, darling. It's too much that hard work. It is hard work, babe. <laughs> believe you me, believe you me. I Don't worry about I it. I didn't realise there was so much in it. Auntie no. Sylvie is your oldest living relative. And you're still not going to bow up, beautiful little thing. <laughs> I know, I know, 92. Well, I found out some stuff about your mother, Mary Ann, over the last couple of days. My mum, I yeah. don't know how much you know. Um, some quite um, upsetting stuff. She was um, well, a proper work, old East Ender. Proper old East Ender. I've known my mother for people to come up and say to her, got a couple of shillings to lend us, old girl. Mm. She says, no, I've only got enough for myself, but she's lent them her washing to take and pawn to get a couple of of. She had a heart of gold, my mum. This is the only picture we've got of Mary Ann. Mm. This is Mary Ann here. Right. For me, your mother, amazing woman, um, that's what I found out, I've done a little bit of research. Did you know that Mary Ann has got a criminal record, right? Oh. <laughs> what it was, it was concealing a dead baby, right? Oh. So, when she was 17, she got pregnant, she had a little girl, and the little girl was two minutes old, so that would have been your sister. So, obviously, she was distraught, she didn't hurt the baby, she didn't kill the baby, she just tried to do it on her own. She didn't, she obviously wasn't savvy enough to tie the cord. Of course, the baby needs the cord to be tied because they bleed out. And of course, she was so scared, she, she hid it in a bucket. Yeah, hid it in a bucket and someone found it. And, um... So all that of the past, I wouldn't have known anything about because I was the youngest of, of the lot. Of course, of course. But you didn't know that you had another sister? That, that, that she, that no one, no, no one, none of us knew. So she didn't say nothing about that, no Not one of us knew no, anything. She never ever mentioned anything like that, did she? Well, well I suppose, no why one, would you? How no do you? one How ever do you? knew about that. So I'm saying, how do you? How do you approach it? I mean, to even come through that, 
and still be a decent human being it says a lot about a woman. Yeah, it's funny, it's funny she lost the baby at 17 because in later life, she delivered all the babies. She delivered me, she delivered my sister, she delivered all the babies in the flats and they used to call her Aunt Polly and say, go and get Aunt Polly quick, there's another baby coming. So, yeah, she turned out to be like a midwife, really. If a baby come quick like that, she would never touch a cord. No. She'd wait till the nurse got there. Yeah. She would never do that herself, obviously, because... Explains it, doesn't she it? She was thinking back to what happened to her, I suppose. Of course, absolutely. So that really does make sense now. Yeah. You obviously, we're focused on the butter van side of it. Is there anything else you can tell me about Albert and Anne? I was about nine when my grandparents died, I think. And he always had that gentlemanly bit about him, right smart. Yeah, and his yeah, old yeah. fob watch, he originated from French. By all accounts, he came from a very rich family. So a very family. rich French family? Rich yeah. French family. His name was Boutavant. Yeah. There's posh in it, eh? Boutavant. 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 So there is some money involved in our family, although we never saw none of it. Yeah. Going right back, because, I mean, we've yeah. never had any dough, do you know what I mean? None of us. So it's lovely seeing Sylph. Very interesting in Albert. I've ordered his birth certificate because I want to learn more about him. I want to see, I want to see maybe how much he was worth, if it says any of that, how French he was. Am I French? How French am I? I know I look French and all that. So. Born, 4th of November, 1851. And he was born Church Lane, Whitechapel. That's strange. He's born in Whitechapel, so he's a Londoner. Name of mother's Hannah Sarah. Name of father, Charles. OK. His occupation of his dad, Charles. Is a commercial clerk. That sounds like he could be still worth money. There's nothing about being French here, though, other than the name. That sounds cockney French in my eyes. Battavant. Whoever you pronounce it, Boutavant. I'd say Battavant. No, there's no T's in it. Um, so I need to find out more, really. Interesting. <laughs> 